Greetings everyone. I'm live and I'm just waiting for the wonderful Ashleen Mooney to join this discussion on how we can come together to eradicate white supremacy and racism. So welcome to this discussion and I'm just going to see if I can get Ashleen on board. So Ashleen, I see you've joined. So I just need you to come into the the discussion. That's it. Let me just. Am I there? Oh, you're here. There you are. I, I didn't. I didn't even need to accept you. Fantastic. <laughs> Hello. 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 How are you? Is there an echo here? Sorry, say that again. Are you okay? Can you hear me? I, Fine. I can uh, hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Perfect. Brilliant. My first Instagram live. So. Oh wow! Fantastic. <laughs> I'm usually on Facebook. Yes, you are, aren't you? Oh, lovely, lovely to see you, and thanks for joining me here today. And um, I hope that our our respective listeners come and join in and listen to what it is what we've got to say because. We've been talking for a while now, haven't we? And we think it's a really important topic, even though it may be controversial and it may be hard for some people to hear, but we see how important it is to have this discussion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I'm, I feel nervous and I feel excited, probably the same thing. And I mean, the last time we spoke, we said, let's talk about healing and ascension. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And then you posted last night and said <laughs> white supremacy and I was like, oh fuck, we're going there. Okay, I trust you on, we're going there. Let's yes. do it. I forgot we <laughs> I forgot we said that. I forgot we were gonna we, we were gonna ease ourselves into that. Oh my goodness, that's me being the bull, the Torian bull, just charge right in there. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, okay, oh I mean, we can, talk, we can talk a bit about both because it's all part, it's all part of it, actually, isn't it, Ashleen? Ascension. What does ascension mean to you? Oh, you know, I like to be practical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> you were forced to go. <laughs> okay, so for me, ascension is humanity evolving it's humanity letting go of all the human stuff the human conditioning that has kept us so asleep in this society that we've, we've been living in we've been fed so many lies and all these lies are coming up now and we are being released from the shackles of the systems that have been holding us an ascension we are, we, are, we are waking up, we are releasing so much of the human condition and we are becoming more of the souls that we truly are. And in that, it is about freedom and liberty and sovereignty. That to me is ascension. I think for, for me, Yvonne, it's about this desire to speak up about stuff that you can quite easily go about your day and just ignore. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been passionate about climate change for years. Yeah. Just now feels like the time to start speaking about that. Yeah. We've been speaking in the last couple of years around uh, the issue of racism. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's become just more and more impossible not to speak. Mm. That That's what I feel like is, it's sort of an, a practical um, that if you look around the world, it looks like it's so many ways just falling apart. And it's, it's, uh, I'm just keep losing. I'm very nervous and I just Aww. keep losing my train of thought. I so I'm going to take off this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Can I, can I, jump in and just um, 
like what I would love uh, to come out at the end of this, because I know there's some people from both of our communities watching this. Yeah. So if I can just really explain my intention. Mm. Mm. Um, and it's, it's to have a conversation about stuff that's scary sometimes, that's difficult, these difficult things to talk about. But it's also to give people practical, I like practical, practical actions and things that uh, we, can, we can do. Nor, you know, ordinary people like me and you, Yvonne, and anybody watching this, practical things that we can do personally and then in our spiritual businesses. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people watching, a lot of people in my audience and your audience have spiritual businesses, they're light workers. Mm -hmm. So my intention is maybe share a little bit of my story, hear your mm -hmm. story, Yvonne, and how ours intertwined yes. in these last couple of years. Yes. And, um, and just things that have happened, and that might explain a little bit of an awakening yeah. that I feel is happening. Yes. Um, yeah. I think around around this. Yeah, that's a good idea because I think I think the way we came we kind of came together is a good example of real awakening and really you leading by example and taking action. And I really I really admire you for that because I know it wasn't easy for you. So do you, do you want to tell yeah. like the, the audience a little bit about what happened? Yeah, I think, um, God, so it's, it's two years we're trying to have this live conversation. Yeah. And in the background, we've been having our own private conversations yeah. around this. And you've been a great support um, for me and different. And I'll share a little bit about that. But, um, you know, it started for me with uh, George Floyd's death, mm -hmm. murder. And that just shocked me as it did many many people mm -hmm. literally to my core I couldn't I couldn't see unsee that video that footage and it just it just shocked me it just sent me into trauma mm -hmm. and I just didn't know what to do with it mm -hmm. and I, I I just so the result of that was I just started watching videos and reading books and just started having a conversation and then I thought I think I need to speak about this to my audience and I did a video and I spoke about it but I think I was 15 minutes or 20 minutes of talking around the subject of racism where I actually mentioned that got to the point and the point of the video was this is what I think this is what I'm doing uh you know maybe this can help you too or this is what you can do too and then through that conversation a mutual friend of ours, Melanie Moore, yeah. said to me, Ashling, go and check out Yvonne Douglas, J. Douglas, go and check her out. So I went and had a look at one of your live streams and I was shocked to see that I had watched that live stream a year before and had left a comment. <laughs> and you were talking about how light workers we need to come together and stand up against white supremacy. And I was like, Great job, Yvonne. <laughs> Keep up the good work. And I was completely blind, completely blind. Yeah. Just complete. I just thought that's out there, and all those white supremacists are <laughs> all gonna, you know, that's and that's for it wasn't for me, and it wasn't part of my world, and it wasn't my job mm. to worry about it even. Mm. So I watched your video with new eyes and I was like, oh my God. And then I saw my little comment and I was like, oh my God. So this was only after I had read a few books, start, you know, I read, read White Fragility and that just, there was no going back after that book. That mm. just blew open everything. I was like, okay, I just, I can't unknow any of this now. Sure. Yeah, so the, and that was it. That's, that was it. We we I picked up the phone, we connected, and I said, "Come on, let's chat, let's see." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, and we were just really supportive. Yeah, we were just really open and very. You were just really fantastic because I was a bit of a wreck, I think, in the beginning, mm -hmm. and I probably dumped a bit of shit, and you know, because I just didn't. I was still in a bit of trauma, I think, around it, and and a, and a lot of guilt and shame, and mm. um, 
so it was so you were so helpful and um and i think from that we said okay what can we do yes to help yeah um our communities to open up to have this conversation mm. so mm. i don't know if you want to add do you want to add anything to that Yvonne, or just i mean just a little bit just in terms of it's a very interesting how when I put that post out before George Floyd, about a year before, I think, or I don't know, six months. And it's just very interesting how you'd seen the video, you commented on the video, but it really, it didn't really enter into your consciousness properly, did it? Until you saw what was going on on the TV and everybody else was very aware of the George Floyd and everybody else was talking. So it just goes to show how insidious our, our minds can be and how we we can have selective hearing and selective listening and seeing and this is why it's important that we do what we what we're doing now today talking about this stuff and bringing it out into the public arena like this me being um a black woman you being a white woman so that people can see that yeah people are talking about this let's bring it to the conscious awareness so that we can really start making some changes and i do feel that by you doing this is great because it's actually you're taking action you're setting an example as a spiritual leader because uh, so we are spiritual leaders okay and as such i think that we have a duty yeah because we are leaders and we need to lead from a space of love and harmony and empathy and compassion. And so doing this is a sign of that. Yeah. We've got, we've got to lead from that space um, and see what we can do to make a difference because yeah. Yeah. when you, <laughs> spirit has no color, mm. spirit has no color. And we're all in this together. And I do feel that white supremacy and racism is a huge tool, just like sexual abuse is a huge tool um, that is used against humanity to keep us divided against the 1%. Yeah. And racism is one of their most... I suppose, to them, one of their most treasured tools because it does keep us disunited it does keep us at war and even today people are still doing horrendous things in the name of racism around the world and um and we have to be seen to be leading in coming together i you know what's coming to mind is you're talking about conversations and how important it is for us to have mm. conversations and one of the catalysts in my awakening because I do think I just woke up um, was I watched uh, Gail Edwards and Inga Dexney yeah. have a conversation yeah and I, I, I told you about this and Gail mentioned that she had been followed by the police in her car uh, because she was in I don't know a nice neighborhood yeah she lives in a lovely neighborhood and <laughs> She, yeah, she knew that she was being followed by the police because she's a black woman. Mm. And that, you know, I hear about all the things happening out there in the world, but it's still um, not connected to me. Mm. But because I knew Gail, like I, I, I don't know her, I haven't met her in person, but I've watched her. I've, she's yeah. come to some of my, my virtual events. I love her work, I love her energy, and I knew Inga, Inga's a really good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So I had these two people that I was connected to having this conversation and talking about racism in their lives. Mm. And it just, and she was like, I have this thought when my husband leaves that he might not come back. Mm -hmm. And that just was shocking to me. I was thinking, okay, no matter what I've experienced, that is one thought that I don't have. Mm. I don't worry that when my husband goes out, he might get stopped for the color of his skin yeah. and end up in prison or God knows what else. And, and that, 
that, that was just so, I don't have to think about that. That's not an issue for me mm -hmm. because the system is, is just rigged in my favor. It is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think it, it's, it's good that you, you, you know, again, you're looking at something so simple as that and seeing the difference it makes to your life and to our lives. Um, and th this is where, as you say, the system is rigged for you. And yeah, the, the white privilege, because somebody may not be racist, but you may have white privilege. And again, is that something that gets challenged or do you just think, oh, I'm okay, Jack, because I've got the privilege. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. I'm not racist, but, but you're still benefiting from white privilege. And then your brothers and sisters, you're of colour, because let's face it, we're brothers and sisters. As I said, spirit has no yeah. colour. When we all ascend and, and pass through the veil, you, you're not going to be able to tell if you're black or white or Asian or Chinese or whatever. Come on. I don't get... Yeah. So... Yeah. So it is a, it is a weapon, think, isn't it? I think... Um, I had a lot of guilt and a lot of trauma and a lot of shame around it. Yeah. In the, when I first came up, you know, and I started really reading and, and, and just opening my mind a little bit. And it was helpful for me to understand that racism is systemic. Yes. It's in the system. Yes. So it's not it's not my fault. Yes. You know, as as a as a, as a white woman trying to do her best mm -hmm. in the world as a light worker. Mm -hmm. So so that was helpful for me. Yeah. And and then okay, so becoming aware of it is the first step. Yeah. Is Okay, racism exists. It's systemic. It's in. It's 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 unavoidable. You know, mm -hmm. and um and and how am I uh, assisting the system, or how am I? What can I do to to break it down? Mm -hmm. And there doesn't have to be a big huge revolution exactly. or you know anarchy, angry, whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be small things that we can that we can do in our lives mm. so i think for me awareness was, was understanding that it's systemic mm. so it's not necessarily my fault mm -hmm. but as you said we do have a responsibility to okay what can i do what can i what can i do in my small world in my small family and community and my online business yes. and that community what, what can i do absolutely so that's that's where I started was okay. That, that's what got me out of the, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, there, there was just a, yeah. That's good because, you know, it, I think the shame and the guilt that a lot of people may carry, like white people may carry due to racism can also stop them from doing something about it because shame and guilt are such low vibrational energies and they can really debilitate you and so what i like is how you 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 push through that shame and that guilt by recognizing that it's systemic and it's ancestral and um you can make a change and you can do something about it because it's not you personally it is the system and i think that that is what a lot of people i guess need to recognize um that it is the system and it is ancestral and you just need to start doing taking responsibility as you said it's a bit like um how on our journeys of ascension we have to start taking responsibility for our own lives and moving forward we don't keep blaming our parents as i say to my clients we're not here to blame the parents but we do have to recognize that your parents may have done a bit of a shitty job yeah but we're not blaming them. And it's a bit like, it's, it's the same thing. The system is shitty and it's done a shitty job in really separating humanity. And so now we individually can take responsibility. Mm. And if, yeah. if we put it that way, it's really quite simple, but we can cause a ripple effect, can't we? Yeah. yeah I, without a doubt, like without a doubt, like if I think of 
the small actions I took, um, some of them were personal and some of them in the business. Personally, with my son, I just start speaking about racism. Mm -hmm. I brought up to my son, he was 12 at the time, he's 14 now, to say, um, hey, do you, I just want to talk to you about this. There's a, a, a guy that was killed for the color of his skin. Mm -hmm. And he said, I know about it. I've already watched a video. Uh, one of his YouTubers, Mark Replier, had spoken about it and spoken out against racism and he already knew about it. Mm -hmm. And what I found astonishing about that was he was already having that conversation, but I didn't know, I, because I wasn't with him, um, I wasn't part of his education. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't know, thank God he was watching a video of someone that has the same values as me. Yeah. But what if he hadn't, you know, who else is out there mm -hmm. with maybe a different message mm -hmm. that could have been speaking to my son? And because we didn't have that conversation, um, God knows what could be in his head right now. Sure. You know, so, so that was one of the things was just gently starting the conversation um, and just talking about it. And another thing is naming it before I would have never done that. So, so now if something happens or we see something on TV or um, last, I can't even remember what it was. I was trying to think before I came on, but my youngest who's nine said something and I cannot remember what it was. And my 14 year old said, hey, Emily, that's racist. Oh, <laughs> good. Like, yeah. But it's, so we name it. Good, yeah. But that's, um, that's something that, uh, so we don't let it go. Mm -hmm. whereas, whereas before, I probably would have just ignored it. Okay. Would have just, I, I just didn't think it was something that needed to be uh, discussed or, or highlighted. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it just, I just didn't really, you know, I just thought, I'm a good person, so. Yeah, we don't really have my kids are going to be good people, so we don't really have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So talking about it and naming it were really, really important um, with my kids. Um, and, I, and I suppose the biggest changes I've made, I've made are in um, the business. I've had a bit more, but anyway, I, what I, what the reason I, I answered that with personal Yvonne was that you said we can be a catalyst. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware now that just that simple thing of, of starting a conversation with my son and, and naming stuff and talking to my kids now about this, that, that's going to affect their whole future. Oh, that's going to affect the kids that they're speaking to in their class. That means that if somebody is being racist in their class, they're going to be aware of it. If they have an opportunity, they're going to be able to speak out mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's different yeah. than if I'd never had that conversation. So it's it's a very simple thing that anybody can do. We don't need to go and frighten our kids. We don't. We, we can certainly just just start mm -hmm. a conversation about this mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I'm. That's why I, I was trying to think why did I say that, but that's uh, where it was. That yet we can be a cat. Because I don't know where that conversation, where that's going to lead mm. in the future. Mm, mm, for you know, sure, for sure. Yeah. And I know that you're not just doing it on a, on a personal, in your personal life. You've also been making changes in your business life as well, haven't you? Yeah. So I think the first thing I noticed, um, I, I was I was started to create an Oracle deck around that time, Angel okay. Oracle deck. I worked mainly with angels. Yeah. And, and I did not occur to me, on, <laughs> but I, I, I probably, if I didn't have this awakening, would have had 44 white angels. Right. Right. So I would suddenly like, oh, shit. angels are all colors. Now, I, I know that logically. Yeah. Like, as you said, spirit doesn't have color, angels don't have color. 
but the representations that we, you know, we associate them with, yeah. Is Santa Claus, is Santa Claus white or black or what? <laughs> Does he even exist? <laughs> Does he even exist? So, so yeah, so I immediately reached out to the artist and said, uh, who happens to be uh, from India, uh-huh. and said, so, so I'm sure she was delighted to, she, uh, and I just said, look, we want to make this deck so that it represents all people, um, cultures, mm-hmm. shapes and sizes, mm-hmm. men, women, children of all different colors. And that's, that was, the, it's two years. It's literally only going to be released next week. Fantastic. So it's been two years creating these images that represent everybody. And I would not have even realized that there might have one or two yeah. people that weren't white would have probably appeared in the deck, but it wouldn't have, I just, it just was very conscious. Yeah. Beautiful. After that, to say, okay, this has to, you know, this has to be, be I wanted it so that anybody could pick up mm-hmm. the deck mm-hmm. and see themselves in it. Exactly. And yeah. That certainly happened with 44 white women. Yeah. Fantastic. But that was one change. And the other change was I host this charity event, the Angel Cafe, That's which right. you've been part of, which is just a live streaming of one or two days of just light workers. And we usually raise money for charity. But I realized with a shock that 44 Pete women uh, were all white. And I was like, oh my God. It's like, you know, it's like you're suddenly sitting. Yeah. I was like, okay. So I began, and it hasn't been easy, I began to invite some uh, more uh, people of color, black women, Mm -hmm. light workers who I love and respect to come in to to be part of that Mm -hmm. um, that event. And it has not been easy because I don't have the networks. So I've literally been relying on you, Yvonne, do you know anybody that might like to participate in this? You know, because it's just trust that needs to be built Mm -hmm. there. For sure. Who's going to trust this white woman saying, come and, you know, come and join my community. You're all going to be welcome here and it's all going to be fine. Mm. And we're all brothers and sisters. And, you know, that's going to take trust and it's going to take time yeah. for me to build up um, that environment that's welcome and opening. And it's going to take some education and, and, and training within my community as well. Mm. You know, allowing my community to see more uh, black sisters yeah. there doing the stuff, mm-hmm. doing sharing their healing gifts. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's been challenging and uncomfortable because I've had to look at myself in so many, you know, I've had to be really honest and say, okay, this is your, your event, Ash. Mm. This is your event. Yeah. So, you know, you're the real... You're, you're the one that lets people in the door. So who are you letting in or who are you excluding, even if it is unconscious? Yeah. So, so that, that's been, you know, it's not where I want it to be. I'm hoping that as, as it evolves, I haven't hosted one yet this year. So I'm hoping in the next couple of months to host another one. And, you know, I think the last one out of 44, we had five or six um, people of color. Okay. You included. Yeah. Oh, and that, and I don't even like um, naming that that I'm fucking counting, <laughs> but I am conscious of it. Yeah, and I do, I do want it to be an event mm-hmm. that's representative of everyone. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, that's it's a work in progress. Yes. So think of that. How, how do you feel about that? How, how is that for you? Um, hearing that, Yvonne, or. It, or, you know, having participated. Yeah, in no, like it, was, that. it was good. And I, and I like your concept, you know, your Angel Cafe. I think it's brilliant, you know, doing it for charity and getting all these light workers on board. And it was an honour to be, you know, to speak speak there. And I was quite happy to give you my contacts and, and whatnot. Because I do feel that as some of us, 
um, in the black community would shy away from accepting your invitation. And again, that's where they need to perhaps maybe um, do some ancestral healing around the pain that they may be carrying from what the ancestors had done in the past and, you know, how um, racism is still perpetuated today. I mean, yes, there are some some um, light workers who are out there specifically for people of colour because of racism, because of that racist wound that people carry. And that's absolutely fine. It's their prerogative. But I just feel that, yes, it is good to have us come together as much as possible and let's stop talking about the separation the separation so much because yeah. it as I get as I said before as as leaders we need to we need to lead in a different way the separation um is causing humanity I could call it separation anxiety <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's not helping us you know we think yeah. we think there's a lot of there's so much disharmony with humanity. But if we actually focused on the similarities that we all have, we would realise that this warfare that is going on right now is not, it's not about the races. It's about the 1% who are trying to keep us enslaved and stopping us from ascending. Mm. That's what it really is all about. Um, so again, it's another level of awareness. And we have to keep, going up a level, up a level, to realise what is really going on, what is behind this, this systemic system that has been set up to keep humanity so divided. So, yeah, I think it's, um, as I said, it was an honour to be um, on that platform. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. I mean, I love sharing my gifts and talents with, with people anyway. So I, I just, yeah, recommend that you keep, keep doing that, you know, and um, and I know that you challenged some other people around their events as well, haven't you? Yeah, well, I made a, I call it boundaries in my business. So I decided that I wouldn't participate in anything that was, uh, so it's like a summit mm -hmm. or, you know, I get invitations, come and join the summit, come and. So I just decided to, um, to make sure that those summits had a good representation of yeah. different people, different colors, yeah. different shapes, different sizes of people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and immediately, you know, as soon as you decide something, spirit goes, really? Let's just test that. <laughs> so I got, I got three invitations within a few days for summits. And, you know, of all people that I love and respect, I have to say, all really good people doing good stuff yeah. in the world. And it was very difficult really? decisions yeah. for me to, you know, okay. Looking at the lineup, I was one of 11 white people, mm -hmm. 20 white people, 30 white people. And I was just like, okay. Am I am I going to go with this? It's going to be great. It's going to serve a lot of people. It's going to help. Or am I I'm just going to ask the question? Mm -hmm. So that was literally it. I just got on the phone or I left a voicemail and just said, look, I'm having this awakening around racism, you know, what's happening in the world at the moment. And I've just made some changes in my business. And um, I decided that I only want to participate in events that have that are representative have at least some representation mm. of um, of white people and people of color yeah. and uh, and one per so one I went ahead with and I went and did it because she said yeah great we have this girl we have this girl we have this girl and uh, you know they're coming on board as well so that was great so I was like okay mm -hmm. so I'm part of uh, something that's a little, little tiny bit of diversity, not massive, mm -hmm. but at least it was they're trying. There. They're trying. Yeah, they're trying, and uh, and then two others I chose to to not participate. Mm -hmm. um, 
And those those conversations were difficult. And uh, they, yeah, I mean, I was as compassionate and kind, and I still love those people, and they're still doing fantastic work in the world. Um, and I, I feel, I hope, that just having the conversation is um, just saying no, no, mm -hmm. uh, even, even though I love you, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to do this yeah. because for X, Y, and Z, yeah. because I wanted to be more representation. So, and that was it. So just stepping back to them, you know, they were, could have been lucrative. They could have brought in some money into my business. Mm. So it's, it's just taking that boundary and, and just saying, okay, mm -hmm. and this, this is the way it's going to be. And just honoring that. So, so that was, that was massive. Um, and it was a massive step for, for me just to be um, vocal. Yeah. You know, it yeah. gave me confidence. And I, I, one of those uh, uh, platforms, one of those things I would tell you, Yvonne, because oh. I was like, to you, Is this raises? <laughs> yes, I remember you phoned <laughs> me up. You, was, you were quite distressed, weren't you, um, about it, not knowing whether to say no or yes. And, and I just, just yeah. just yeah just told you to trust your gut really well this is what i loved because we didn't have a conversation about racism on that day you you just said to me uh i was like is this okay or not okay or is this and she, you just said um it's okay for you to feel upset mm. about whatever you fucking want to feel upset about mm. and react in whatever way you want and so it just gave me permission to, it doesn't matter if it's racist or not racist, it just means that this is the reaction I'm having in my body. Absolutely. And is, I'm just going to say no this time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and that's, so I'm trying to think about any, any other things that I did. Um, I think, just, yeah, just finally saying yes to this mm -hmm. and saying, okay, let's, Let's have a conversation. Yeah, let's, let's yeah. Uh, uh, let's start because we we talked about it. We I've written about it. You know, written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and just to come back to to that, that I can. Um, two years ago, I was a different. I was traumatized and I was shocked and suddenly woke up around this issue. So I, I wrote things differently and I've noticed that I'm probably more ready now okay. to talk about this rationally. Yes. And I've learned a little bit. Yes. So a lot of the guilt has, has, you know, I've looked at it and I've, you know, I, so, so I think, um, I think the timing is right. Yeah. Absolutely. It does take time to process um, trauma and and guilt and shame, etc. And as you said, you read the book White Fragility, didn't you? So that has probably helped you a great deal. Um, and, it, and I think it is important that people give themselves time to come to terms with the reality of their existence and what they're, what they're living around and what they're accepting. And, and don't be too hard on themselves. And... Um, don't try and defend racism in any way, shape or form, but just just look at, OK, how am I feeling about this? And, you know, you may be also carrying the, um, the, the sins of your, your ancestors as well. Right. So that needs healing. Yeah. You know, so I, I've often said that with racism, black black people need healing from the effects it's had on them. But white people also need healing from the effects of that, the way their ancestors have behaved. They need that, all that, those thoughts and feelings about being superior. They need all of that extracting from yeah. their psyche and their DNA. Um, yeah. So we all have to take responsibility, don't we? And, and this is why, as I said, we're having this discussion as spiritual leaders, because I do think that we should be leading on this because we should know better shouldn't we i think it's uh 
you know, I'm just like, uh, you're talking about even uh, ancestors and people on our family line, but I've been racist. Mm. You know, I, unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my grandmother, my, you know, all good people. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's, it's there. It's so, so there's, there's a lot. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's there. I, I think it's going to take another couple of even generations, you know, my kids, kids. Yeah. We'll start, to, you know, like, you know, what I said to you about I'm counting the numbers of people that turn up for the, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. In, generations that won't be the case of just being there's 44 people at this event yeah and, yeah you know it's it, so so I, I think there's a lot of healing generationally but there's a lot of hope there is there's a lot of hope there is the little things that we can that we can do mm -hmm. you know uh, you know talking about education quickly some of the things podcasts mm -hmm. videos Trevor Noah I love him uh, the Red Table Talks. Mm -hmm. I love listening. Three generations of yeah, women. Yeah, three generations, yeah. It's fabulous. Mm. I love it. Love that. Just just uh, on so many different topics. Um, so I've watched hours of the Red okay, Table Talks. Okay. So, um, and the other series that I listened to that I, uh, I absolutely loved, it was called... Um, it's a podcast called Scene on Radio, S-C-E-N-E. -E. Okay. And um, they do different series. And there was a series called Seeing White. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful, it's, it's, it's confronting, it's challenging. Yeah. But it's a history of racism mm -hmm. from an American perspective. Okay. And it's so beautifully done. And it was just brought me to tears, awakened me and just, just giving me so much information. I love history. So it was, it was just, that was really a, a non-aggressive, so, you know, not in your face, mm -hmm. just a beautiful way mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to get some information in. As you were saying, it had, the information before hadn't hit me yeah. to get it in. Um, Absolutely. So you know stuff, stuff like that. I would recommend. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, yeah, that's their sort of things. And I was thinking about right, what other things could I do? You know, that maybe I haven't done. Um, and one of them in the business is you know that we could create scholarships for our programs mm -hmm. for people specifically for. Um, uh, people of color mm -hmm. that can't afford to join the program, we can create yeah, scholarships. Yeah. And um, so we're looking at that in my business probably from September. Okay. We can donate. So we you can donate personally to an organization. So one of the the, the organizations I've donated to in the last couple of years is Tree Sisters mm -hmm. because they're helping indigenous tribes right. on the ground. Yes. You know, planting trees all over the world. Yes. So for me, and lots of other things apart from that. So you can donate, and then any charity events you do, you can, you know, highlight, even just highlight this. So, so and it doesn't have to be, Tree Sisters is still a little bit um, separated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still a bit over there. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, Amazon, yes. the rainforest. So, I mean, you can find something, a charity nearer to home. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Know. No, um, so there's that and organize events, have conversations. And another thing is is just by buy, buying books and products, like buying White Fragility. Um, there's, there's that other great book I have on my Kindle and I haven't read it properly yet. Um, is it why I no longer, why I, no longer talk to white yes. people about racism? Yes, yes. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> My Kindle's full now. I've been listening more to Red Table. Uh -huh. So, you know, you find whatever suits you. Yes. Reading, 
audio, video, whatever, yeah. whatever. You know, the, I like Trevor Noah because he's very funny. Mm -hmm. I listened to just this morning. I listened to something talking about Joe Rogan. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I had avoided that conversation for a while, so it's well worth watching. Um. So yeah. So do you know? Get educated in the way yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. I like him because he takes the piss a bit, you know. Okay, so. good, yeah. yeah make, make it a little bit lighthearted because it doesn't have to always be so doomy and gloomy, does it? Every, you know, not always. It's, um, yeah. So so you're doing quite a lot of things and, and there's a lot of things that people can do. And so I think it's great that you've highlighted those things. Um, and it's like one step at a time, isn't it? Yeah, well, they're small steps. Yeah. So small things that you can do. I have a business, so I'm lucky that I can mm. do these things. Mm -hmm. But personally, there's, there's lots of things mm. that we can do as well. Yeah. yeah, You know, anybody can donate. Anybody, you know. For sure. We can all sit down and have a conversation with our husband or our kids. Mm. And, you know, there's there's things that we can do. Yeah. We can get books. We can there's a beautiful book that I want to get for my daughter and I cannot remember the name of it, but the author is Victoria Jameson. Okay. Uh, it's his book and it's about um, a refugee camp and the graphic, it's a graphic novel. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a really good one because I haven't had a full conversation with my nine year old. Mm -hmm. so I thought, well, that's a good, interesting way yeah. because she got her other book, Roller Girl. Okay. And she loved it. So I, so I thought I saw this book by the same author and I thought, okay, that's on the list. Mm -hmm. So it's like fun things, nice things. Like that's going to be a fun thing to talk about a pretty heavy topic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I've seen, I've read a little bit of it and it looks beautiful, beautifully illustrated. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. Good. So anyway, I think that's it. Loads of all. It's brilliant. Do you think, do you feel that your heart as, expanded throughout this process that you've gone through with this awakening I think um, I feel I it, that I've just been lifted up shaken and put back down and it's taken me a couple of years for it all to settle yeah yeah and I've I've made a lot of mistakes in there. Mm -hmm. of course. So, 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 and, and I probably wouldn't have been able to have this conversation. Mm. So, and I think the, the, one of the big pieces, although it was about me saying no to something in, in my business, um, I found a courage. It gave me a courage that I didn't know I had. Yeah. And it made it okay to stand up and say, this isn't okay. Mm -hmm. This isn't okay with me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a people pleaser. I like, <laughs> I like <laughs> making people happy. I'm a light worker. Yeah. Come on, an empath. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we, we want to, ultimately, we want to make the world a better place. We, we don't do. want to rock the boat. And, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. so, so that was massive to... And and the other piece, as I'm just coming to me as I'm talking to you, is I, I listened to seen on radio this morning, mm. and they were talking about this new series they're doing, and it's called Repair. But it's a lot around the climate change and the economy. It's well worth listening again. Okay. But um, at the end of it, uh, he gave a quote, and he said, uh, Martin Luther King had said. Oh, no, no, I don't know what the quote was. I'm going to share that. I'll share that quote with you and you can put it underneath it. Okay. But there was another thing that the girl said um, at the end of it. And she said, what type of ancestor do you want to be? Ah, oh, I like that, Ashleen. Whoa. I was I'm painting, painting our house from moving in. and I was in tears. I was like, oh, my God. And I think that's the most important thing ah, is that yeah. my kid, can see a woman that's prepared, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's challenging, mm. to, to speak, to name, to uh, not imperfectly, and not, and I still don't think I'm doing enough, but to at least be doing 
something. something. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I love that. What ancestor do you want to be? What legacy are you going to leave? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because really and truly, yeah. we, we are all here at this time to make a difference, to disrupt the system. And we've got to yeah. get, take, get that courage. We've got it within us. Yeah. And you're definitely showing that, you, you know, you're, you're using your courage. And yeah, we're making a difference. And so let's keep having these conversations and let's see how else we can, you know, bring about this change. Because it has to happen whether we like it or not, because humanity can't carry on like this, can it? So... I really appreciate you coming on my timeline today and um, having this this conversation. And it's not it it gets easier, doesn't it? It definitely gets easier. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Definitely gets easier. Yeah. <laughs> the hardest is the first part. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. We are one. This is the thing. We are a collective, and collectively we create what we see around us so collectively we can make a big difference and change it you know um yeah. we've we've got so much that we can learn from each other and uh let's as i say let's focus on the similarities and not the differences yeah yeah Love it. all thank right you so much, Yvonne. thank you so much, no thank you <laughs> it's been it's been wonderful it's been beautiful to listen to you and um, I hope our listeners get a lot from these conversations. And if you have, please do share it with um, people within your community um, because we need to spread the love, we need to spread the light and we need to spread the change and the transformation that humanity need to go through. We do want to eradicate white supremacy and racism. It's not, it's not heart led. It's not, it's, does, it, it's not who we are. We are beings of love. And racism and white supremacy is not about love. So let's do what we can to eradicate it. Thanks, Ashleen. Thanks, love. I'll send bye you bye. the link. I send you the link so that you can yeah. put it on your um timeline as well. All right. Brilliant. Thank Much you. love, everyone. Okay. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for the love. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.